Hi there, Bernard von Schulman, and I'm going to be starting a new series of videos called Things You Might Not Know About Canada in World War II. And the best place to start is the very beginning, the declaration of war on Germany in 1939. And why did Canada take a week longer to declare war than the UK, France, New Zealand, and Australia? The largest part of this reason comes from Mackenzie King, who was Prime Minister in 1939, but also in the uh, early 1920s, was a desire to have Canada assert its own separate sovereignty as a monarchy. The, one of the big starting points was a thing called the Schnack Crisis, when the British Empire was deciding that it, whether it wanted to go to war with Turkey or not. And Mackenzie King, on behalf of Canada, said, no, you can't put us at war without our consent. We refuse to agree. You have to have our consent for us to go to war with you. You can go to war on your own. This ultimately led to what's called the Statute of Westminster, which was passed in 1931, which gave the dominions of the British Empire de facto sovereign status as nations unto themselves. There's still bits and pieces that weren't completely in place, but they were. For Mackenzie King, this was a very important milestone, but it wasn't enough. And he went through an insistence that the monarchy of the British Empire is not the monarchy of Canada. It may be the same person, but the king was the king of Canada, separately from being the king of the UK or of anywhere else. In 1939, we saw this when uh, the king and queen, the first reigning monarchs to visit any dominion, came to Canada. And as you can see on this medallion that was issued in 1939 for this visit, it says in Latin, King, Queen, Canada, not of the British Empire, not Emperor of India or anything else, is just simply King and Queen of Canada. And when the King and Queen went to go visit the United States, it was a state visit on behalf of Canada that they were doing, not on behalf of the UK or the British Empire. William Maltline Mackenzie King went down to the United States with them, and they were the King and Queen of Canada while they were visiting. So this is very important for, for King, is that this assertion of Canadian sovereignty and independence. And that's where much of why Canada declared war later came about. So declaring war against Germany, the UK and France had given the ultimatum to Germany on September 1st, giving them 40 hours to withdraw from Poland or a state of war would exist. And lo and behold, they didn't. And as soon as the UK declared war, all the colonies of the British Empire were immediately at war. They did not have the power to say yes or no. And one former Dominion, Newfoundland and Labrador, was immediately put at war because of that. And Newfoundland and Labrador had been a dominion but lost it, their status when they went bankrupt in the 1930s. New Zealand decided to declare war separately, but more or less at the exact same time. And it was simply the, a statement by the Prime Minister that we are at war. Australia, the Prime Minister there, decided that because the British Empire went to war through the declaration of war out of the UK, Australia was at war and there was no need to declare war at all. In South Africa, the Prime Minister at the time, Herzog, was not in favour of the British Empire overall and certainly not in favour of going to war with Germany. The Parliament in, in South Africa argued for a while and, and quickly deposed him as Prime Minister and placed him with Jan Smuts, who then had South Africa declare war quite quickly thereafter. So by, um, by the end of September 4th, you had all these various countries who were now at war with Germany, but not Canada. Canada didn't end up at war with Germany until September 10th. Here we can see a headline from the 11th where it declares that Canada is now officially at war. So what happened? Well, Mackenzie King decided that Canada could only go to war with a declaration of war passed by the Parliament, that the House of Commons and Senate needed to vote in favour. Now, the Parliament wasn't scheduled to come back to, uh, into session until October 2nd, so it took a while to get all the MPs and all the senators back to Ottawa, but by September 7th, they're all back in Ottawa. And so September 7th, um, they're back in Ottawa. The 8th, they debated it and started passing it. And by the 9th, it was passed. Now, it wasn't passed unanimously. There was one MP that didn't vote in favor, and uh, that was J.S. Woodsworth. And he was the leader of the CCF, the precursor to the modern NDP. He was a um, Christian pacifist and could not support a war of any sort and refused to vote in favor of this war. The rest of his party did vote in favor and he then had to step down as leader because he'd lost the confidence of his own party.
But Parliament and parliamentarians did not hold it against Wordsworth that he voted against the war. In fact, King spoke out in favour of the importance of having someone like Wordsworth in Parliament, that no Parliament would ever suffer from having a man like Wordsworth stand up for his principles and speak for his principles, and that ultimately, really, this is what we're fighting for, effectively what he's saying. So anyway, the Parliament passes it all, and next step is Canada wanted the King, as the King of Canada, to... Um, actually, you know, approve the declaration of war. So Canada um, needed to have the declaration of war taken from uh, taken to the king in London. So the High Commissioner uh, for Canada, Vincent Massey, later Governor General of the country, went to the palace and brought the declaration. And as you can see here, it is signed by King George. And this is the only declaration that I, of war that I know of that was separately signed by the king. Uh, during World War II. And this was done on September 10th, and this now put place Canada officially at war with Germany. So Canada put it in its government official uh, record, the Gazette, uh, the Proclamation of the Declaration of War, and that is how Canada ended up being at war a week later than the vast majority of the British Empire or the French. Anyway, there will be more uh, in this series of interesting things you may not know about Canada during World War II. If you can think of things, please let me know. Please comment on your thoughts on this video. Uh, please let me know if I've missed out on anything, uh, dropped anything in that. And uh, you know, otherwise, share the video, subscribe, all those wonderful things. Thanks a lot.